interesting to see him. Here's Dean Lander in, and he scores! It's nine seconds in, and he has the first goal of the game in back-to-back. Nine seconds in! Hello everyone, and welcome back to Jab NHL Vlogs. And in today's video is the post-game reaction video from the Toronto Marlies game I went to back on February 20th, 2023 against the Utica Comets. But before we get to this one, I want you guys to please like, scratch out for new, hit notifications, leave your comments down below if you guys have any thoughts on this game I went to. If you guys are at this game, any other thoughts or feelings you guys have in general on this post-game reaction video, feel free to leave a comment section below. I'd like to hear from you guys down there. Alright guys, let's just jump right to it. So first of all, I'm going to be talking about... My experience at the Hockey Hall of Fame. Yeah, so the Hockey Hall of Fame in downtown Toronto. So we're going to get into that first. So, you know, overall, my experience there was really good. I had a great time there. You know, look at all that and look at all the old uh, NHL memorabilia from all the old players in the league. You know, you got a lot of legends there, especially a lot of original six, so a lot of Montreal, especially a lot of Chicago, Toronto, Boston. So a few Boston stuff, Red Wings, Rangers. Basically, all the original six, you're going to have a lot of pieces there for that, and lots of old jerseys. Some of the jerseys had holes in them, too. I mean, they look kind of in rough condition, but they're, like, from, like, the 1930s and 20s. Some are from the 20s, like, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, like, early 2000s, even, like, 2010s. You, you got it all in there. You basically got, uh, like, pretty much every generation of hockey in there, especially all the really, really old jerseys as well. And yeah, it was a great experience. I definitely recommend everybody that does not live in the city of Toronto or the greater Toronto area to go check it out. And even if you do live in the city, I still recommend it for every hockey fan. If you're a fan of museums, like you like a lot of museums, going to a lot of museums, and you're a hockey fan, it definitely works perfectly for all you guys. You can learn a lot there. And yeah, you can learn a lot about the old players, some players maybe not known in the past. You can learn a few different new things as well. So also the... Saw a couple pucks from milestone games, including uh, one player I think was from the Chicago Blackhawks. I forgot who he was, but he had like a hat trick in 21 seconds or something like that. It was crazy. And it was even faster than a knee nine seconds. So you got three and 21. That's nuts. If that ever happened like today, that would probably be going crazy everywhere for a long time. And it would probably end up in the Hall of Fame like that. But yeah, you know, Hall of Fame is basically a place, you know, where it highlights all, you know, the great legends of the game that, you know, the older guys, you know, like, you know, for example, you got like, you know, you know, Wayne Gretzky, obviously, you know, Mario Lemieux, Bobby Orr, I saw him in there. I saw a couple, uh, yeah, like lots of old Leafs as well, Sittler, Gilmore, uh, some other people, like King Clancy, yeah, King Clancy, that was another guy I saw. And yeah, a few other players from the Leafs as well, you know, a few guys from Boston, Neely, yeah, Cam Neely, Esposito. Got all those guys, you know, a lot of Montreal, yeah, a lot of Habs stuff as well. So they had like a whole locker room dedicated to all the Habs players, you know, Patrick Waugh played for Colorado, Montreal, had a great career. And obviously, if you guys uh, knew about that Patrick Waugh game, about those nine goals that he let in against the Red Wings, uh, that I felt kind of bad for him there. And then he got traded to the Avalanche after, obviously, but he's a great goalie, he has a great history in the league as well. I saw a Colorado and Montreal jersey from him. Patrick Waugh's 400th win jersey when he was in Colorado. That was pretty nice to see there. And, yeah. And they had basically a whole locker room dedicated to Habs stuff. And, yeah, guys, I'm not a Habs fan, of course. I was just like, ugh. Bittersweet. But it was kind of cool. It looked actually really nice considering like looked like the old locker room. I also see the pictures of the current one. It actually doesn't look too bad, actually. Like, their current locker room at the Bell Center doesn't look too bad, even though I'm not a big Habs fan. I can respect it. It actually looks kind of nice. And, yeah, you know. Looks pretty nice, actually. And, yeah, you got John Beliveau, you know. A few other guys from Montreal, Ken Dryden, you know. Jock Plant. Sorry if I said his name wrong, but, yeah, you know. You know, all those old guys, you know. And I saw a lot of old, like, skates as well. It was crazy. You got to see a lot of old equipment, and it was fun. It was really fun to go around and look at everything. It was great seeing all the old ledges of the game, seeing a lot of milestones. And also, another thing to highlight from the Hall of Fame was the trophy area. You got to see literally all the real trophies. I got the Hart Memorial I saw. I saw the uh, Rock of Richard. Matthews won that. And the Hart. And yeah, there was a couple other ones. I think there was the Art Water Ross. Yeah, Art Ross, I think, is another one. A Consumite. I think that's the one with the Maple Leaf Gardens in it. And then you got the real deal Stanley Cup there. So I think if you go in June, you probably won't see too many of those awards. 
because they're like, you know, they're going to be uh, going like to the team that wins the cup, obviously. I think they just borrow all those trophies and they'll bring them back to the Hall of Fame after. And you guys can actually take a picture with it as well. I also touched the Stanley Cup as well. You guys actually saw a picture of it in the thumbnail of the Hockey Hall of Fame vlog. And man, it was such a cool experience. Like, trust me, guys, it's definitely a recommend. 10 out of 10. I recommend all you guys, even if you're not hockey fans, you know, I still recommend it. It's still like something to do in Toronto if you guys are ever going to visit. If you live outside the city, it's definitely a recommendation. I think they're open. I think it's all you know, all the time, pretty much every time of year, even if it's, ho even if it's not hockey season. I could still go there. I recommend, guys, uh, maybe not go in June if you want to see the Stanley Cup. Obviously, the yeah, June is when the Stanley Cup will get handed out. So, yeah, maybe just don't go in the summer months if you want to see the Stanley Cups and the other trophies because they're probably going to be gone for most of the summer because the players and, yeah, the team that won the Stanley Cup and all the players that won the other trophies are going to be celebrating, obviously, those accomplishments. And they're not easy trophies to win. I can't believe I touched the, like the real Stanley Cup, you know, all the, you know, Colorado Avalanche just had fun with that cup, you know, all the other teams that won, you know, Tampa Bay, not a fan of them, and, you know, St. Louis, Pittsburgh, back to back, you know, got to see you know, a lot, even Chicago Blackhawks a few times, even, I wonder if that was the same one the Leafs touched in 67 as well, I think it might be the same one, I could be wrong, but it could be right, and also, I'm pretty much in the same area. You got to see the Stanley Cup rings as well from all the previous champions. So, yeah, just like those teams I mentioned, saw all those rings in there. Uh, some of the rings look pretty nice. You know, yeah, they pretty much all look pretty good. Again, I wasn't really a fan of the Tampa Bay ones, but, you know, it is what it is, right? But like the Colorado one, I like the St. Louis one as well. That was another nice-looking one. Chicago, that was a pretty interesting one, too. And, yeah, you know, hopefully Leafs, maybe we'll have the maybe 2023 ring will be ours. Hey. You never know, but we need to break the first round of curses first, okay? We got to always think about that, but it was great. And also, guys, I want to show you, I got this book there as well. Like, when we were walking, I didn't really show in the vlog, but, yeah, it's a pretty cool book. And, yeah, you know, yeah, you got, the, you got like, different stuff in here, yeah. Yeah, Tim Hortons. I think it's just, like, a lot of, like, I don't know what it is exactly, but... Yeah, so it's like like old stuff about hockey. I don't know. It's a long book. I'm not gonna show it all. Yeah, like just stuff like this. But yeah, that's a pretty cool book as well. But yeah, you know, pretty nice book. And yeah, that was a pretty nice uh, touch as well. That I, you know, we were actually offered it. And we just got it. I think I don't know if we had to pay for. it. I think we did. I don't, I don't remember actually if we had to pay for it or not. But yeah, pretty cool book. Uh, I definitely learned a lot from that book. So I didn't really read it as much, but I looked at it a little bit just now, of course, for you guys. But yeah. Pretty cool book and just overall great experience. Recommend all you guys uh, go there one day if you guys want to learn about all the uh, like the old hockey players that you guys like at museums. Your hockey, your hockey fans, hundred percent recommend it, guys. You don't if you don't live in Toronto, check it out. Uh, definitely a recommendation for me because I live just outside the city. So hey, trust me, it's a good place. And also a shout out I want to give to Mister Blue Jay Noah about this topic as well and this is a suggestion for him and yeah guys first of all before i give the suggestion uh please go subscribe to him right now he deserves it he makes blue jays content like i said and smg4 reaction video is great content closing on 900 subs so guys please go help him out he deserves it uh yeah he deserves it and he's a great uh person great supporter of mine thank you mr noah for everything for all the support and yeah you're a great person i'm you know for my channel, great supporter, and, you know, motivating me to keep doing this. You know, definitely a big motivation for me to keep going. So, I definitely appreciate it. And, yeah, just thanks a lot, Mr. Blue Jay Noah. And, yeah, and the recommendation for Mr. Blue Jay Noah is going to be is that, man, I recommend you check out the Hall of Fame one day if you're ever in Toronto. I'm not going to force you. I get you're a baseball fan, but, like, I've already taught him a lot about hockey. Yeah, I taught you a lot about hockey already, Mr. Blue Jay Noah. But if you want to learn even more, I definitely recommend you go check it out. Uh, you can see the Stanley Cup. Like I said, I took a picture with it. You can see a bunch of old uh, stuff. The Habs replica locker room and, you know. And, yeah, just a few other things. So, yeah, I just recommend it. You know, one day if you want to ever learn about hockey, I definitely recommend you go there. If you want to, like, gain even more knowledge. You're doing pretty good, actually. He's getting a lot better, guys. He's definitely been getting a lot better ever since the season started. Yeah, he's been actually getting better with some of the players as well. And yeah, he's been doing pretty good. Even the teams he's starting to get there. 
with the nicknames as well for some of the teams, you know, like the Habs, Montreal. He's even getting that now. So he's doing pretty good. But, you know, if you want to improve your, you know, hockey knowledge, definitely go there. You'll definitely learn a lot. And, yeah, if you're ever in the city and maybe there's no baseball or even in the winter, I recommend checking it out. I mean, you don't have to, but just a recommendation, man. But thanks for the support. And, yeah, it's definitely a great experience for you guys as well. And also one last thing to point out. From the Hall of Fame, before I move on to the actual Marley's game part of this reaction, is that there's actually a couple of theaters there that you guys can go check out some uh, movie productions. Uh, we went into the TSN theater. There's also a Tim Warren's one as well, but we didn't go in there. And I, and I did not film in there as well, if you guys are wondering. I don't think we were allowed to film in there. It's almost like the movies can't really film in there. But yeah, they had like this production about like a Game 7. Yeah, it was called like Game 7 or something like that. It was basically like highlighting, you know, all the old players. It was basically like actors. I think they're actors because they look nothing like the players that were showing like Gretzky. They show like Gretzky, you know, Bobby Orr, that, you know, the iconic celebration where he like does like that dive, you know, like that. Yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about. And yeah, they also showed Mario Mute as well. And it was almost like when they were shooting, the puck was almost like the puck was like coming right at you on the screen. It was a little, it got me a little bit the first time, but then I got used to it after. But it was really cool instead of like talking hockey. It was a really, really cool production. You know, props to TSN and the Hockey Hall of Fame for making that production. It was really good. I enjoyed it a lot. It was actually great. It was actually really great. I recommend you guys go check that out as well. It's actually free as well. It's 3D, so you guys will get 3D glasses as well. And yeah, it's pretty cool. And yeah, this is why you guys should maybe if you guys are like, you know, if you're finding if you need something to do in Toronto, if you're ever visiting outside of town. From a different place, you guys don't know what to do, and you're a hockey fan, go there. Your favorite team will probably be in there somewhere, you know. You guys will probably see your favorite team in there, and yeah, it's it's fun. And they also have bubble hockey as well. I actually played a game with my grandfather, and I won uh, 4-3 to three in overtime. Yeah, they actually do overtime. I had like a 3 nothing lead. He came back. I was like, uh-oh. And then overtime, I had a chance and won. Yes, yeah, so that was great. And then also one last thing to note, and this will be actually the last thing. They had like cool interactive room as well. With like, uh, it was like the, you can shoot the puck on the goalie. I didn't do that. It was like a video projection. projection. They also had like a replica scoreboard there as well. That looked really cool. It almost looked like a real deal scoreboard. Like a Scotiabank. It almost looked more like the Coca-Cola one. It kind of looked like the Coca-Cola Coliseum one. But it looked really nice. They actually had like the stuff rolling on it. It was pretty cool. It looked really nice actually. But just thought I'd point that out. But yeah. Anyways, guys. That's pretty much going to be it for that part of this uh, reaction. So let's get into the actual post-game reaction from the Marlies game. So let's get into it. So, first of all, I'm going to talk about my overall thoughts and feelings on the game. So, you know, overall, uh, besides the game itself, it was a really good fan atmosphere. You know, a lot of families there, a lot of kids. know it's a lot of kids. And, yeah, it was really fun. Had a great section as well. We were sitting in 118, last row, and there were red seats. And it was, like, at the very end of the uh, section, and yeah, last row, like I said. Yeah, also, it was a really good spot as well because they were right at the end, last two seats. And also, there's like just railing, so there was like nobody in front of us. We had extra leg room. And also, pretty much, we didn't have to stand up for everybody as well, so that was pretty nice. One person beside us had to just stand up for us, too, and that was pretty much it. Well, you didn't even have to stand up, but yeah, you know, it was great. You know, it wasn't too much. I mean, there were mainly people just, you know, on the other seats of the row, but it was really nice. It was actually one of the best seats I had all the season, for sure. Definitely one of the best seats I had. It was really nice. And, yeah, shout out to my grandfather for those seats. So he did a good job picking those. Pretty good spot for Mario's game. For a Leafs game, it would have been amazing. It wouldn't be just great. It would be awesome. It would be probably the best seats in the house for a Leafs game. Probably one of the better seats in the house for a Leafs game as well. Red seats are really good. You know, you get to go in the Scotiabank uh, gallery as well. We actually left that way. And, you know, it's not pretty nice up there. I think they make food up there for Leafs games and all that. It's a pretty nice spot. Scotia Club, red seats. It's really nice. And also you got the, the bottom seats. Those uh, gray ones are platinums. And you got the platinum club. And then gold are just probably average of the 100s. They're still not cheap, though. Gold seats in the 100s are still definitely not cheap. But, like, platinum are really, really expensive. And the uh, Scotia Club as well are definitely not cheap as well. Especially, you know, for the playoffs as well. And both offer, like, food. And, and you can go, like, to those special areas. You have that restaurant. I think that's just for the red seats. I don't know if you can go there if you're in golds as well. I have no idea about that. But, yeah. You know, it was a really cool experience. You know, great 100 level. And, yeah, not all the concessions. 
stands were open as well as another thing I noticed. Yeah, not all the concession stands were opened. So yeah, some of them were closed. And it was mainly just the 100 level was, was that was open as well. Yeah, mainly just the 100 level. 300 level was pretty empty. And yeah, to be expected, you know, not everybody's going to come out. Some people just want to relax, family day, to get an extra day off. But, you know, for people that were there, they were pretty good. You know, fan atmosphere, pretty nice. And it was a great game. Graphics look really nice. I like the intro as well. Nice songs for the intro. Nice sounds for the warm-up music. And it was great. Yeah, it was pretty good. Overall, had a great time. Yeah, everything was pretty good. The ice projections was not too bad. And it's almost just like going to Leaf Game. You know, it's more affordable. Definitely recommend it for you guys uh, that can't really afford to go to Leaf Games. Definitely go to Marley's Games. Especially at Scotiabank Green as well. If you want it to feel like more like a Leafs game. More like high class. I definitely uh, attend the Marley's game at Social Bank if you want it to feel more like a Leaf game, that's for sure. But you know what would make it really feel like a Leaf game if they actually had the same goal song as the Leafs? I wish they did actually have the same goal song as the Leafs again. You know, some of you guys are like, what are you talking about? That's the worst goal song in the United States. Oh, blah, blah, blah. I know some people are really not happy with that goal song. I mean, I could understand because it's 1980s. It's just like, it doesn't sound great to some people. It's either you like it or you hate it. For me, I like it. And it would have actually sounded really nice in the section we were in as well, 118, you know. I still appreciate the ghost song they do have, though. It's actually pretty nice as well. I actually really like it as well, you know. Definitely gets the crowd hyped up as well. But, yeah, it would have been nice if they could have played the same one. Maybe even just for one game, they just do a Leafs night or Leafs day. That would be awesome. If they ever do a Leafs, like, goal song for Mars and Scotiabank, I'll be there. I promise you guys, I will go. 100% I will be there, and I'll go on the 100 level for sure. Without a doubt, but I don't think they would do it because that's stupid. Like, you know, I mean, I don't know why they would do it. Because basically it's saying, you're already the baby leaves, you just got to crawl in the middle. But anyways, besides the point. Alright guys, so that's pretty much going to be it for that. So yeah guys, so I guess now we're going to get into the actual post-game recap. And yeah, before I get to it, yeah, I'm just starting off with the uh, post-game recap. So yeah, so let's start with the uh, final score of this game. The final score was the, uh, yeah, the Marlies did win this game. Yeah, so Marlies would end up taking the win in this game. The final score was the Toronto Marlies 3 and the Utica Comets 1. So a 3-1 win for our Toronto Marlies. It was a great game. Played great defense. And yeah, the starting goalie for the Marlies this game was Keith Petrozelli. And he did really well in that for the Marlies. He did great. Only uh, let in the one goal. And he made a lot of great saves. He was pretty good, actually. He made some pretty amazing stops. Got to give credit to Petrozelli. He played a pretty good game. And, yeah, definitely a good goaltending prospect for the Leafs down in the AHL. He's doing pretty good. He's doing his thing. I mean, he's definitely leading the Marlies towards the playoff spot. And they're actually, like, second in the entire league. Last year, they didn't even make the playoffs, which was disappointing. But this year, they have a chance. This year, I think for sure they're going to make it. And maybe I can go to a playoff game for the Marlies for you guys as well. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. If I go, I'll let you guys know. But, yeah, anyways. Yeah, Petrozelli did good. He was even, like, the backup at one point when, like, both uh, uh, Murray and Samson were done with injuries. And back in November, he was actually as the backup at one point. And he's pretty good. I could see, like, I heard he was pretty good. And then I see him play uh, that game on, on Monday against the uh, Comets. And he played really well. He did absolutely amazing, you know. Got to give him, like... You know, kudos. He did. He did a great job in net. He did a. He did. He played a great game and put on a great performance for the fans on Family Day game day for the Marlies. But anyways, guys, uh, let's get into the post game recap right now. So let's just jump right to it. So we're gonna start with the first period of play, and the Marlies would open up the scoring in this game. Matthew Hellickson would get his very first goal on the season in the AHL. And that would give the uh, Marlies a 1-0 lead. Really good for Matthew Alexson. Just heard about this guy literally for this game. And yeah, he got his first of the AHL season. So really good uh, for Matthew Alexson. And also, another thing to note about this goal. Uh, it was pretty hard to tell if it actually went over the goal line at first. So it was like basically, I think a shot was taken. Then the puck like it looked like it just barely crossed. Like no one cheered. Then eventually everyone just started cheering. Then the goal horn went off. Son started playing, then everyone just like went crazy after. It was just like, like it was like, is it in? Is it in? I'm like, yeah. And then everyone just started cheering. I'm like, okay, I guess we have a one nothing lead. And then eventually the refs would look at it. Yeah, for back to back games under review play. Then the PA guy said, uh, plays under review. They don't have mics apparently. Yeah, the refs do not have mics in the minor leagues either in the OHL or the AHL. They actually don't have mics. NHL, you guys know, uh, they have mics. They say like after video review in the NHL, but. 
EHL, they don't have Mike, so the yeah, PA announcer has to announce when the play is under review. So he said the play is under review. They looked at it, and then after video review, the referee did the good goal sign. So yeah, he pointed goal, and that would be confirmed. The goal for Matthew Ellickson, giving the Marlies a one the lead, his first on the season. Congratulations to him. That must, be, feel, that must feel really good for him. And one nothing Marlies, and then the Comets would end up tying the game at 1. Not sure who scored the goal, but yeah. Comets ended up tying the game. That was a little bit unfortunate. I think it might have been a power play goal as well. And yeah, so that was unfortunate. So 1-1 one, one game, and that would be the score after the first period of play. 1-1 one, one tie. Not too bad, you know, first period pretty good, you know. We're feeling kind of average. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I think we could be pretty happy about that period, so... Anyways, I mean, at least we're not losing, right? But anyways, guys, and also, no, actually, wait, I forgot. One more fun fact. Uh, actually, if the Marley, yeah, the Marlies actually did score first in the first period. So if it was a leap game, we would have had pizza, guys. Free pizza would have happened again, but it didn't. Man, with that's unfortunate, but Marlies, you got to get on that. You got to do the free pizza thing like the Leafs, okay? If you score first in the first period, you get pizza. Like, let's go here, Marlies. But, yeah, anyways, I'm not going to judge them for that. But, yeah, that would have been a pizza goal. That's just a fun fact. But, anyways, guys, let's get into the second period of play now. So, uh, with about four minutes left in the period, the Marlies would strike again. Bobby McMahon would give the Marlies a lead. Yeah, give the Marlies, regain the Marlies lead. It's now 2-1 to one Toronto, and that would be his 17th on the season in the AHL. Really good for McMahon. He has been spending time with the Leafs and the Marlies throughout the season. He even got called up to a game against the Red Wings, and he actually scored his first NHL goal. But wait, they looked at it, they actually reviewed it, and they called it back. I believe it's for goalie interference or something like that, and I was pretty disappointed with the refs. I was like, come on, refs. Even the announcer on TSN said they were going to count. I think it was Mike Johnson saying that, I mean, there's no problem with that. I think they should count it, and they didn't for some reason. I'm like, what? I'm like, ref, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> that's why the refs, you know, get people a little bit angry sometimes, you know. And they make, you know, like not the greatest calls. And they would have been a one nothing game. would have been his first NHL goal. But they uh, called it back. And I was pretty disappointed. I was, I felt really bad for Bobby McMahon. And he's actually been doing really well in the AHL as well for the Marlies. He's actually been playing really well this season. I've seen some highlights. From the previous games, he's actually been scoring quite a bit. I think he even scored a hat trick not that long ago as well. He's been tearing it up. He's been doing actually a really good job for the Marlies, and I gotta just give him a lot of credit, you know? Yeah. McMahon's a really good player, and I think one day he could definitely become an NHL regular for the Leafs. Like, once he gets his chance to become a full time player, I think maybe even next year he could even be in the full time roster. He's really good, and I think he deserves a chance to maybe get his first NHL goal again. But for real this time, I think he's going to do it one day. And I can't wait to see him score because I basically watch every Leafs game. So can't wait to see him score as first NHL goal whenever it happens. But yeah, anyways, 2-1 Toronto. And then just a little bit after that, not even a minute later, Max Ellis would extend the lead for the Marlies. And he would give the Marlies a 3-1 lead. His six on the year. He's not a bad player as well. I think he's been scoring a little bit as well. And yeah, so 3-1 Marlies. And that would be the score after the um, yeah, second period of play. And then the third period came around. So, yeah, and then we're moving to the third period of play. And there would be no goals to report. And that would be all she wrote in this one. 3-1, your final score for the Toronto Marlies. Pretty good game. I mean, defense was definitely the winner here today. Definitely goaltending uh, gave us the win for sure. Patrick Zali got the first start at the end of the game as well. Gave away the goalie stick, and that was really fun, you know, to see him, you know, get that first start. I was happy for Patrick Zali. He played a great game for the Marlies. And I just got to, like, respect that. I'm like, you know what? Respect to Petrozelli. He's a great goaltender, 100%. And I really, you know, I just have a lot of respect for him. He's a great goalie, very impressive. And I just got to give him a hand for that. You know, that was great. But, yeah. You know, great game for the Marlies. And, yeah, also another thing to note uh, with the, actually, Hockey Hall of Fame. They were there as well. I think the mascot was actually there. I saw him at the Hall of Fame as well. I actually didn't get him on video. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you know, that was pretty cool as well. Actually, the Hockey Hall of Fame, I was like, wow, what are the odds of going to the Hockey Hall of Fame today when they're actually promoting at the Marlies game too? And I guess maybe just because a lot of people went there and I guess they kind of knew. So I guess it was just kind of giving us an idea. But yeah, you know, family day, basically hockey day this year for me. I definitely had a lot of fun with my grandfather. He enjoyed, he enjoyed the day as well. We got to learn a little bit about hockey and the Hockey Hall of Fame. Had a great time at the game. And yeah, we both had a great day and it was really fun. For the both of us. And yeah, it was just overall 
had a great day, and it was just, it was amazing, you know. Definitely couldn't ask for much better on family day. Alright guys, so that's pretty much going to wrap this video up. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I want you guys to leave a like on this video, scratch out. If you do, hit the locations, leave your comments down below if you guys had thoughts on this game. What to, if you guys were at this game, any other thoughts or feelings you guys have in general on this post-game reaction video, feel free to leave a comment section below, below. I'd like to hear from you guys on there. That's pretty much going to do it, guys. Have a great day, guys, and I will see you guys on the next video as it being. And it will probably be another announcement of some kind. I'm not sure yet exactly what it's going to be. So yeah, just stay tuned for any content coming on my channel, whether if it's an announcement or if it's a different video. Whatever I post next, so just please stay tuned. Please uh, stay, uh, keep an eye out for upcoming content on my channel. So yeah, yeah turn on post notifications. Always make sure that you're uh, making sure that uh, you're watching out for my videos. But yeah, so turn on the bell, put on notifications, make sure you don't miss another video. And that's probably going to be what's coming up next. So whatever video it is, you guys are going to see it and that's what it's going to be. So anyways, guys, so that's pretty much going to do it, guys. Have a great day, guys. And I'll see you guys next time. So let's go Marlies. Let's hope, you know, they play good for the rest of the season. Hoping they play, you know, great games. Hoping they win. And hoping they make the playoffs. I think they will. They're second place in the uh, entire league. So I think they have a good chance of uh, making it to the postseason. So, yeah, just hoping they play well. Hoping they get a lot of wins. Hoping the Marlies, you know, play well for the rest of the season. And hoping if I do go to a playoff game, I can get it on for a vlog for you guys there as well. Hopefully, maybe if I can ever go to a playoff game this year, that would be great. It would be good to get the chance to do that, especially in the suite as well, Coca-Cola Coliseum. I'm hoping I can get to win a Coca-Cola before the end of this year. I'll see. I'll have to see the options for that arena, but I'll see. If I can get there for a game as well, that would be awesome, and I would definitely love to do that for you guys as well. Get a vlog for you guys there as well. But anyways, guys, uh, yeah, I don't really have too much else to say, and yeah, just, you know, hoping the Marlins play well, hoping they win games, and just, you know, I'm just hoping everything goes well for the rest of the season. But anyways, guys, that's pretty good. Do it, guys. Have a great day, guys. And I'll see you guys next time. So let's go Marlies. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.